Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to Namaste Village. It is Wednesday. And this is the day to realize that it is in my defenselessness that my safety lies, that I need not defend. In fact, in defending myself, what's going to happen? I must be attacked. That doesn't make any sense. That, that doesn't seem to make any sense intellectually at all. If I don't defend myself, I won't be attacked. If I defend myself, I will be attacked. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. Well, these are all just wonderful examples of how the, the logic of the divine is completely the opposite of the logic of the world. And we're called to come into a direct experience of that, not to understand it because we can't. In this level of what we think of as reality, trying to understand that it's in my defenselessness that my safety lies, not in defending, not in armor, not in weapons, but being defenseless. That's where true safety is. That's not something that we can grok. It's not something that we can intellectually get. However, we can let it get us. And that's what we're going to do today. So this morning, I wrote a little song. And I'm going to need you to sing it with me. And the key is to not just sing these words, but to feel them, to drink them in. It's very simple. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. I'll sing it once or twice, then I'll bring you in, okay? In my defenselessness, my safety lies. In my defenselessness, safety lies sing that with me in my defenselessness my safety lies drink that in now in my defenselessness my games for our true 
yourself wholly to this. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. One more time. In my defenselessness, my safety Just hold still for a moment and see if you can feel divine safety, holy protection, and being wholly protected. This is an experience. Not an idea, not a concept, it's an experience. And it's one that we can have right now. If we just surrender, beginning with all of our ideas that we must defend ourselves. That we have to protect ourselves, because if we don't, what might happen? I'll tell you what might happen. Someone might, might walk up to you as you're walking down the street and spray something into your hair and then start patting you down like they're, um, like they're getting this stuff off, like bird do or so, oh, let me help you while the other person steals your wallet. Mm -hmm. That's what might happen. Yeah. And guess what? That happened to Julie. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is not so much what happened, but how do I respond? How am I going to look upon that? Am I going to look upon that and say, oh, I'm, I should have been paying better attention. Oh, I should have been protecting myself. Oh, if I'd only known. Or am I going to hold resolutely to this? In my defenselessness, does true safety, and my safety is not whether someone takes something from me. Guess what? That's what the world does. That's what the world of perception, of separation, of split mind is meant to do to remind you that this is not your home. Ooh, that can be challenging because we want to believe this is our home. But these little reminders tell us, no, beyond this world is the world that you really want. And I don't mean beyond this earth. This is where we get confused sometimes. The world that I have chosen to create and to see and to perceive in my mind, beyond that world, there is a world of unity, of oneness, of reality. So today, I, I don't do this very often because I, I know some of us are students of A Course in Miracles and some of us are not. And that's fine. The truth is true, where whatever lens it comes from. But today we are going to read a little bit of this because... This seems to be what's in front of us. And whatever is in front of us is where, is where the lesson is. And when I heard what, what happened to Julie, my, my first thought is, oh, we have to warn everybody. We have to tell everybody. If someone walks up to you and you feel something like hit your, your, your head, like something wet, and people start running up to you trying to get it off, I need to let them know that so that they can, well, as, where, where's Catherine? Is right Catherine? Here. <laughs> Catherine yesterday demonstrated what she would do. Uh, don't do it now, please. She, well, what did you call it? Your crazy white woman scream? Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. I would run if she's. <laughs> so, are, are we all to learn some kind of a crazy scream? I don't know. I don't know to defend ourselves, to ward them off? I don't know. All I know is this. It is in my defenselessness that my true safety lies. So I've picked just a few paragraphs because lesson 153 in the course is a pretty long one. So I've picked just a few paragraphs to really bring this home. But I, I want to begin with us being very clear with what the world of the split mind is and what it's for. So this is what the first paragraph says. 
you who feel threatened by this changing world, its twist of fortune and its bitter jests, its brief relationships and all the gifts it merely lends to take away again. Boy, he doesn't really paint a very fun picture of the split mind, does he? Attend this lesson well. The world provides no safety. It is rooted in attack. I mean, really think about that. Don't just ah, push that away. Really look at it. And you're going to discover it's true. The world is rooted in attack. The split mind, the, the separate universe is rooted in, I have to defend myself and I will be attacked. All its gifts of seeming safety are illusory per, uh, deceptions. It's attacks and it attacks and then attacks again. No peace of mind is possible where danger threatens thus. Okay, what do we do with that? Well, I, I begin by going to the lesson of the day from A Course in Miracles, which is love which created me is what I am. Love which created me is what I am. I am love. That's my rootedness. That's my safety and my salvation. And when something happens to me here, and it will, I hate to tell you, something's gonna happen. It may not be today, it may not be someone spraying water in your hair, but something's going to happen. Come back to this. Remember that it's in my defenselessness that my true safety lies, and the truth within me is forever safe, forever protected, forever whole. Let me read a bit more. We look past all of these dreams today and recognize that we need no defense because we were created unassailable without all thought or wish or dream in which attack has any meaning. The truth within you is unassailable. Count on that. Now we cannot fear, for we have left all fearful thoughts behind, and in defenselessness we stand secure, serenely certain of our safety Sure of salvation, sure we will fulfill our chosen purpose. As our ministry extends, our ministry now, as it extends its holy blessing through the world. So <clears throat> what this is saying is that if you want your true ministry, and if you want that to extend as a blessing to the whole world, you must be like a little child. No defenses. Now, how far do we want to take this? It's good. All the way. All the way. That's... <laughs> Says yoga boy in the back. All the way, yeah. Uncompromising. Remember, that's one of our favorite words. We, we, we could have a whole meeting and we, we could list all of the, the ways that we should follow this and all the ways, well, just in case if this happens, Make sure you have mace in your pocket. Or if that happens, make sure you know some karate moves. We, you, we could rationalize that all day if we want, right? But what happens if, if I just really give myself to this lesson and be so innocent, be so defenseless, that no matter what happens, my peace is not disturbed? Now, I, I don't know how Julie felt in the moment, but I know that when she told me about it, I could still feel the peace within her as if the truth within her was not disturbed. And I, whether this is true or not, I, I'll bet it is. I, I could feel her blessing those people because she knew it's not what it looks like. It's something much deeper. It's what I choose, how I choose to see and am I willing, even in a situation like that, to choose to see those people as innocent? What do you think a whole mind would do? What do you think Jesus would do or any other master, or whatever you want to call that? They would see their innocence. 
Read a bit more. Be still a moment and in silence, think how holy is your purpose, how secure you rest, untouchable within this light. You are untouchable within this light. God's ministers have chosen that the truth be with them. That's you, by the way. You are the ministers of God, of love. Who is holier than you? Who is holier than these ministers? Who could be sure that their happiness is fully guaranteed? Your happiness, if you want, is fully guaranteed. And who could be more mightily protected than you, the ministers of God? What defense could possibly be needed by the ones who are among the chosen ones of God by God's election and by their own as well? You have chosen this path. You have chosen. You wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be listening to this right now, sitting in this room or sitting wherever you are. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't realize that you were chosen. You were chosen to express divine innocence. Not original sin, but original innocence. That's how we were created. And that's how we remain one final bit. Today, our theme is our defenselessness. We clothe ourselves in it as we prepare to meet this day. We rise up strong in Christ. Christ, you know, let's expand our definition of that. Just in case you're wondering, I, I love what Richard Rohr says. Christ is just another word for everything, everyone, and every moment. So we rise strong in that, in that Christ, in that experience, and let our weakness disappear as we remember that God's strength abides in us. God's strength abides. That's the only thing you need. We will remind ourselves that God remains beside us through this day and never leaves our weakness unsupported by strength by eternal strength. We call upon God's strength each time we feel a threat and of, of our defenses undermine our certainty of purpose. We will pause. There we go. Here's the pause again. We will pause a moment as God tells us, I am here. I am here. So knowing that the I am is present within us, right now, and that it's by holding true to that divine defenselessness that we are totally safe. So let's sing this chorus just a couple of times just to anchor that feeling and that experience. In my defenselessness Okay, Victoria. Brother James, wonderful compilation of um, experience, starting with uh, just resting in that music before we started to sing, that experience of being just where we are, defenseless, open, receiving. And you said all the elements that, I, that for me are so important in that experience with Julie, if we want to see beyond this world, we're not only able to see beyond this world, we can live in it. And this was a great example. And what you said is that Julie in her heart wasn't, wasn't too ruffled and she still had that blessing to give. If we are created as love, 
what would love do? You know how he used to say, what would Jesus do all the time? It was a saying, kids wore bracelets. What would Jesus do? Well, what would love do? Love would see an attack as a call for help. And love would give the help. Maybe it's to give your wallet, maybe not, but you give the blessing. And that's what Julie did. That's what you said. That That is having your wits about you. That is living in a mind state of, I live in God's love. That's living not in a split mind. That's living in a non-dual mind of love without opposite. Oh, and that's what beyond this world, there is a world I want. I see this is a call for help coming from a split mind. But this is the other piece of it. This is what I remember all the time that helps me. If I'm seeing a split and a call for help, it's my own. You know, there are many places where Jesus says, we have to take 100% responsibility for what's going on. And then the, uh, out, the out picturing of it, the unfolding of it, is the gift given back to us for the opportunity, perhaps for correction, for the opportunity to see that we are not victims because maybe we have believed that we could be victims. And this one experience with Julie has it all. She seems just to be on her merry way and something seems to come out an attacker and she seems to be a victim. That's exactly what the split mind draws as its diagram of living in duality. But when we are restored to one will that we are as God created us, we're his children of love. We live in, a, in the land of love. Then if we live in the land of love, then all that's given us are the tools of love. And one of them is the vision to see what isn't love is a call for love. And if I'm the one seeing it, it must be somewhere my own call and my opportunity to heal any other misbelief that separation could be true, that there is another world of being a victim or being hurt. And, and, that, and then the other piece you mentioned, that pause, in that pause is where we become either defenseless or we become fighters. Either we fight or flight or we or we open to the presence of love, which is the spirit of love, the Holy Spirit. In the pause, if we can have that, that uh, I don't know, that gift of love stay consistent in us, we pause for a moment and the Holy Spirit literally fills us with the answer. And that answer is always going to be a blessing. I remember one time uh, years ago in the restaurant, I sent a, one of my little girls with the deposit to the bank. And she came back and said, oh, someone stole it from her. And I, it, whatever it was, I knew it was her boyfriend and it was a setup. <clears throat> and so I'm sitting in the office thinking, now, what do I do with this? Of course, I'm a student of Course in Miracles. In my defenselessness, I remember sitting there as you were doing this, thinking, oh, no, I needed that money to cover the chips. Nope. In my defenselessness, I've got to see this is my own call for help because I believe that my safety lies in a bank account, in green strips of paper. And perhaps if I were physically attacked in my body's safety, my safety lies in the love of God. What would love do? And I remember sitting there saying, okay, I gotta love this girl and bless her. And don't worry about what it looks like. And <clears throat> of course I didn't send her for deposits anymore. I changed her position a little bit. <laughs> but, but the truth is I love that little girl because I could see, oh, this is a call for help. They're buying drugs or they're doing something. And this is a big call for help. I've got to, I got to answer the call for love. And I don't know the Holy Spirit I have to take care of the bank account. And he did. And I'm, this is the truth within a month, my, my sales in the restaurant went up about a third. And it was dramatic for me at the time because I needed every deposit to cover whatever those days checks were. And um, not only that, the situation with that little girl and her boyfriend shifted. Now, I don't remember to this day the, the details, but I remember thinking, oh, this is good. She's not with him anymore. She's not, they're not doing the drugs or something happened. But there was a healing that went all the way around where nobody was guilty. I never said, never told her I knew, never anything, just 
I knew this happened, but I knew it was my responsibility, not hers. And I asked for correction for myself. I really sat in the office and was shaken. So I paused in that moment and I knew to answer her call for help. And that really was the formula for me. It's take responsibility. This is the opportunity for a deeper healing of my own mind. I have to wait a minute because I'm shaking. That's where you wait for it. You wait for the Holy Spirit. Let yourself shake. It's okay to shake or be concerned or be frightened. Just wait with the Holy Spirit. Don't wait alone. Wait with the embrace of love. Let love hold you there. And then give the blessing. Give, answer the call for help. If we don't answer our brother's call for help, we're not receiving because we're not giving. We, it's in our giving of the call for help that we get the help we need. And I needed sales to go up and there it was, sales went up. So I was very grateful, it didn't go up overnight. It did take about a month, a couple of weeks. And I thought, oh my gosh. And I knew that that was directly related. I knew that that was my call for help and this was the form it took. And my little girl, Jackie, I remember her to this day, wasn't blinded by drugs anymore. And she continued to work for me for years, very happy and very healthy. So that was one example. But all of us have the example. The blueprint is in what would love do? How would, if we're God's children, how would he take care of us through love? And it's in going and listening and trusting him beyond the fear, wait it out, taking responsibility and giving the blessing. So that's what I have to say this morning, James. And Julie, thank you for that example. And uh, thank you all, I love you all. Oh, thank you, Vicki. And by the way, who took Julie's chair from over here? Julie usually sits right there and she usually has a, a certain chair and- She's back there. Yeah, I know she's back there, but- I, I, I saw her come in and there's usually a chair that says Julie's chair because it helps her back. Julie, we got you. Don't worry. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Vicki. Well, we have something really, really beautiful now. And we have a new resident named Scott Grace. Many of you probably saw Scott when uh, he played for us virtually at one of our Sunday services. And uh, he now and then is going to share a song that he writes just for our sessions, kind of like I did with this this morning. Uh, and we're just so happy that Scott's going to be with us. So Scott, I'm going to, uh, while you're getting set up, Leslie, you had something that you wanted to share. So if you could do that quickly while Scott's coming up, that would be fine. So come on up, Scott. Okay, cool. There was a wonderful story in um, Chicken Soup for the Soul about a small, a man, a woman, and a small child who were camping in a rented uh, camper van in Baja, California. And in the middle of the night, some banditos banged on the van and uh, came in and started looting the place. And um, the man thought, well, if these were guests of mine, what, what would I do? And he started giving them all the good stuff, like the camera and Etc. And uh, he uh, they he offered them food, but he said, "I'm sure they probably don't want tofu." <laughs> but only one of them spoke broken English, and they ended up uh, forcing them to drive somewhere. And, and the guy realized that he they were driving themselves home, and they had taken their car credit cards and money, and uh, so I and on the way. He said, uh, if these were my guests, we would be singing. And so the only song they knew was La Cucaracha. <laughs> so they started singing that and everybody was singing. And when they got to the to these people's homes, the, the one who spoke English handed back some of the, like the credit cards and some of the money and said, we're so sorry. This is the only way we know how to get money. And it was just such a beautiful story. So thank you for allowing me to share. Microphone's here, I think it'll work. Okay, beautiful, thank you, dear. So this is Scott Grace, everyone. I think some of you know him already. And so Scott, I'll let you share what you want. Sure. Well, to get the maximum health benefits of this song, I want you to know that the experience that Julie had was at Walmart. 
Okay, now you have all the information. My defenses cause me pain. Always looking for the blame. May I let them go? May I trust in God? Let my peace not be disturbed. Though the world is so absurd, trust in God. May I trust in God. When they climb over my fence, let me see their innocence. God's peace needs no defense, though the lessons get intense. Don't believe in the poop that seems to fall on you. Let it go. Trust in God. We're all children of his grace. Though we all do make mistakes, trust in God, trust in God. Defenselessness is where it starts, open mind and open heart, but still be careful at Walmart, trust in only God. Let me not see with my eyes, and I shall never compromise. Trust in God. Trust in God. All is well all of the time. As I pause within my mind. Trust in God. May I trust in Scott Grace. Wow, just trust, 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 surrender. Ah. Julie, anything you want, you want to share or? Okay, beautiful. <laughs> that says it all, just trust in God, but tether your camel. <laughs> yeah, you know what they say in Islam, trust Allah, but tether your camel. Just because your defenselessness doesn't mean you just you know, through all, it's such a fine balance, isn't it? Just trust, but I think you get it. You know what I'm saying. All right, let's take a deep breath. We center ourselves one final time in that experience of trust and defenselessness of true, holy, sacred safety, because the truth within me is unassailable. The truth within me cannot be threatened by anything in this world because the truth within me is wholly beyond all of this. And I go there now as I remember the words of the beloved to me, I am here. God is here in this and every moment. Amen. I think we'll leave it right there in that sacred space. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Scott Grace. Thank you, Vicki. Thanks to all of you. What a blessing. So trust in God. And when you go to Walmart, you know, hold on to your wallet. <laughs> if anyone sprays anything in your head, just bless them and step away. <laughs> but make sure you bless them. All right. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Namaste. 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 Namaste.